The deer rifle is an American icon, but over the decades, the form and function of the deer rifle have changed dramatically. Design, manufacturing, materials, accuracy, ergonomics, handling, all these things have seen updates, arguably upgrades. It begs the question, how much better are today's deer rifles than the ones that previous generations of hunters carried into the woods with them? That's the question we aim to answer on Beyond the Rifle. Join us for this 12-part series as we take a detailed look at the new Bolt Action Benelli Lupo. We'll explore the Lupo's features, put them to test in the field, and demonstrate what hunters can expect from one of the most modern bolt action rifles available on the market today. We know what you're thinking. Isn't Benelli a shotgun company? Of course it is. But decades of shotgun manufacturing have actually put Benelli in a unique position to redefine what a hunting rifle should be. Let's take a look at some company history and see how this all came about. Benelli as a company began around 1911 when the Benelli brothers started making motorcycles. They made very good motorcycles and were quite successful for some time. However, imports from Japan were quickly starting to dominate the market and the brothers began to look for other areas to grow their business. In 1967, they met Bruno Civellani, an inventor who had come up with a new operating system for shotguns, the inertia-driven system. The Minnelli brothers were outdoor enthusiasts and hunters and saw the benefits of this system as it relates to simplicity and reliability right away. In 1968, Benelli began producing shotguns. Through the 70s and 80s, Benelli continued to manufacture shotguns in increasing numbers. However, it wasn't until 1992 when Benelli launched the Super Black Eagle did things really begin to take off. The Super Black Eagle was the first semi-automatic shotgun that could reliably cycle everything from two and three quarter to three and a half inch magnum loads, which was very relevant at the time due to the 1991 federal ban on lead ammunition for waterfowl. Through word of mouth, one blind at a time, the reliability of the Super Black Eagle became known, and that's really when Benelli took off. Through the use of robotic manufacturing and robust quality assurance programs, Benelli over the years has been able to make the inertia system even more reliable. So a lot of people ask me, why did Benelli decide to make a rifle? Bolt action rifles is the largest segment of hunting firearms sold. So from a market opportunity perspective, it makes sense to look at it. Benelli never takes a look at these things and says, we're just going to do another one of these. There's always a lot of innovation, there's a lot of engineering, there's a lot of testing, there's a lot of things that go into it. We also have a lot of innovations that we've developed in shotguns, such as cryo treatment, recoil reduction, and adjustability that we thought would be perfect fits on a bolt action rifle. We knew that if we tied our precision manufacturing to our innovations, we could make a fantastic rifle, and we did in the Lupo. The Lupo is, of course, a very accurate rifle. It's guaranteed to shoot sub-MOA. However, it's loaded with other innovations, such as progressive comfort recoil reduction and adjustability. You can adjust the drop, cast, length of pull, comb height, even the reach to the trigger, and the pull weight of the trigger. And a lot of those things that are now incorporated into the Lupo actually had their start with guns like the Super Black Eagle III. All of these features combined make the Benelli Lupo the best shooting, best feeling, best fitting rifle ever produced. Attention to design detail, high-tech machining operations that produce quality components and a reputation for reliability. Benelli combines all these strengths into the Lupo rifle. But what else does the Lupo offer hunters? We'll find out in episode two of Beyond the Rifle. For more information on Benelli Firearms, go to BenelliUSA.com. And to catch more episodes of Beyond the Rifle, visit GameAndFishMag.com.